Hey guys, what's going on? Sadiq. Welcome to Experiences with Sadiq. Experiences with Sadiq is about all things real estate. A show where communication is key, advocating for the people's bliss, and knowledge is inspiring. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the show. And oh yeah, don't forget to follow me on all my social media platforms. Whether you're buying or selling the home, I'm that guy. Let's go! Hey ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It's just man Sadiq from Experiences with Sadiq. Welcome to our year-end review. Let's go. So about four years ago, I was supposed to actually get into real estate, but at that time, my son was going through a medical uh, situation. He had hydrocephalus. And I was still working in the auto industry, which I was in for almost a decade at that time. And when I had my son, I was thinking about getting into real estate. I was taking my license, all that good stuff. And I had to stop because I had an opportunity to a promotion to, to become a finance manager in the auto industry. So I decided to, you know, go that route. And I decided to stop the real estate aspect of it and just stick with what I was doing in, in the auto industry with the new promotion. But fast forward, um, things went south and things didn't work out well, you know, within the auto industry. I've been in it for so long. I've reached my cap. So when I had the opportunity to dive back into real estate, I want to be able to feel like that I have some value that I can share with the people. One of the reasons why I started this po podcast, want to give you guys something that you guys could be educated on, you know, but I also want to be educated as well. So ladies and gents, definitely want to say thank you guys for joining me. Uh, this year has been an amazing, amazing year. And in the beginning of the year, you guys probably, probably saw a lot of my old footage and you guys saw that I was doing the I, using the iPhone and all that crazy stuff. So I was doing a lot of things by myself. And then we also dived into what I would call the transitional phase of what was going on in terms of uh, meeting up with my video videographer, Jess, and how we just actually started looking at things and making things bigger than what I was doing, what I was doing by myself. What I was doing by myself was crap. And it was just an amazing, amazing journey, just going through the whole entire process. I met Jesse uh, through Matt Resnick, which is a loan officer who also had his own podcast office. And I wanted to shoot, Matt invited me over to his office and he asked me, Sadiq, hey, when you're podcasting, uh, I'm opening up a podcast in my facility and j just do it there, do a slew of videos there. I'm like, you know what? I'm like, all right, I will. So I went there right before COVID hit. We decided to do like about eight videos, I think it was, that we did. We did like eight videos and we did it all in one day. <laughs> so I just invited a bunch of people that I think that play the pivotal role in the real estate industry. We had the intention on going back to the same or our room to do a, a slew of other podcasts. But guess what happened? COVID hit. COVID changed the whole dynamics of everything. You know, so we literally had to sit back and just draw out a new blueprint in regards to how we are going to deliver content to you guys. And guess what happened? Zoom came along, you know? So Zoom happened. Zoom was a, a great, great way to act, to be able to provide information. So there was really no more cameras, no more meeting with people one-on-one. -on -one. COVID literally changed the dynamics of how we did interviews. We felt good when we know that we could go back to society and start interviewing people because we had to go through phases. And I think it was like phase two or phase three that we act, we sat down and we did our first interview. And I believe that first interview was with um, Cindy Vo from Sample Home Loans. And I would love to talk to you guys about some of the great highlights, some of the great moments, some of the great interviews. Sam Alba from, uh, uh, not rap, you know, I think he, I, I believe Sam Alba provided a lot of insight. Dan Vulcan from Vulcan Tile was a great opportunity to sit down. I work alongside Dan Vulcan uh, for, for a while now and it was a great, great opportunity to sit down with Dan Vulcan. Rose, Rosa Zanelda, 
uh, Francis Gerardo from my office, the Berkshire Hathaway office, and John DePena from uh, Total Mortgage. That was awesome. Actually, that was a really great interview. So we had a bunch, a bunch of interviews. And just want to say thank you very much to all the individuals that took the time to sit down with me one-on-one -on -one and um, did an interview with me. Thank you very much. Even to my my guy, uh, Tober from uh, uh, Af uh, Africa Africa D Lounge, you know, which was a which is a restaurant in uh, Providence, or right off of Federal Hill. You know, it was an opportunity to shine light in the uh, within the business versus typically doing uh, interviews with people that's involved in real estate. You know, I want to give the opportunity for uh, business owners to be able to shine light on their business by the same time still being able to cover why people should be should be buying homes within the local neighborhood and why they should dine at local businesses that's within that neighborhood so thank you very much for this opportunity to grow to learn to educate to share knowledge on everything involving real estate on experiences with Sadiq love you guys Talk to you guys soon on the next season two, Experiences with Sadiq. Be on the lookout. Catch you guys soon. Love you guys. Stay peace. Stay humble. Stay blessed. Yep. You still feel like today that uh, African-Americans or people of color are still dealing with some type of racism, uh, even regardless of the 1968 uh, regulation right. law. Of course, it's not as bad as it was in 1968. But to say that it was eradicated because of that law, mm -hmm. that would not be truthful because, you know, there's a Human Rights Commission in Rhode Island and there's an MCAD, Mass Commission Against Discrimination in Boston. And those folks would tell you that they have cases involving rental and mortgages and home ownership where there's discrimination cases that they take on a daily basis. They send a black person and a white person to a certain bank or they'll send them to a certain uh, rental agent and to see if the response from that bank or rental agent is the same by having black and white partners, let's say, work together, going to the same person to see if the, if the attitude is the same. I think we have more power than we think, and I, but I, I know that a lot of people are, are, are more aware. I, I can feel a change coming. It doesn't feel like, like the... In, We've, we've seen a dozens, we've seen dozens of black men get killed by police. Um, but I think this most recent event or incident feels different. The pro I think there was like 10,000 people in Providence alone. I've never seen that. On Saturday. I've never That's seen crazy. that. crazy. And yeah. I, I know this, this stuff has happened. It's just, it, it hasn't happened in our lifetime, um, but I've never seen it. And I think we're, our voice is getting louder. Um, and I, I think that's that's powerful. I think I really think. I want to know what is NAREP and what is your involvement within that organization? It's the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. Mm -hmm. And it's actually the largest Hispanic organization that exists yeah. in the country. Not in terms of real estate driven only, it's just the largest Hispanic organization that exists in the whole country. Yeah. So I saw the magnitude of it and the power that, that actually it had. We created a board of 12 members. So we created a board. I, I was the president, so the founder president of the chapter here in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, my term is up coming in December. And another proud moment is that one of my team members, Roger Duque, is, is set up to be the next uh, uh, president, because he's, he's current the vice president today, mm -hmm. and he'll be stepping up to be, uh, uh, automatically to be the president for the next term. Shout out, yeah. Roger. Yeah, You're yeah, making yeah. big moves. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> You're making big moves. He's been mentioned three times in this video. <laughs> I know, right? I'm going to have to mention my wife, Danielle <laughs> Alba. I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> you know, it's not about taking the photo. It's technically like you're making a picture. Can you see your dog running in the backyard? So mm. each picture kind of tells a story. And so you want every photo to tell a story and inspire people to be like, yeah, I want to go check that one, that place out. Yeah, how do you go about bringing that artistic attribute a out artistic and so people right. can see it and they believe it and they just like, wow, I can see myself living there, Oops. this and that. There's a few little tricks that I love to add. Virtual staging. Mm. So if you take a, a vacant listing or maybe even not a vacant listing, but a listing that's like in complete disrepair, the owner doesn't have enough time to clean it, 
you could declutter a photo and then you could pop in fresh furniture kind of like you know this living room here like it looks really good it's staged really nicely you're bamboozling the, the people <laughs> <laughs> i like to mess with people's heads currently there's about 40 million individuals who's currently renting properties uh, in, in about 70 million households right now there's a major issue going on in regards to those individuals who might end up losing their properties. There's been a safety net that's been created, not by Congress or not by HUD, but CDC. So what is that? It's basically an eviction ban to help those individuals from getting evicted of their property. It's a temporary ban, but at least it gives you the opportunity to be able to know what your next game plan is going to be. I think looking back, um, I did have training. I didn't have relationships in the business. And as we know, you know, lives are, my whole life operates on my relationships. Um, so I think it's always really good to have someone that you can just kind of peel the onion with. And you know, what's a day in the life look like? What is a, your first year look like in the business? You know, what does this process look like? I mean, what is, is there a balance? Totally <laughs> All of these things, <laughs> and you're never gonna find that online, yeah. right? And um, so I think having some relationships and being able to just network with some people in the business is always really helpful. Get a home inspection. If you don't get a home inspection and you move in, and the next day certain things start breaking out or once you move in, you start noticing things are not the way you expect it to be, that's an issue. Making sure that home inspector comes to a property that you're buying, looks at everything from top to bottom. Top to bottom meaning from the roof to the electricals to the plumbing, the foundation, make sure that the roof is in good shape. Uh, let me ask you that, how important is digital marketing when it comes to small businesses and how can someone use digital marketing uh, to leverage their position in real estate? I like to say, especially for real estate, it's like breathing air. If you don't have any of it, if you're on Mars, if you're on the moon, you're dead. <laughs> you're dead in the water. Like it is so, it is so essential, especially with branding. You think if you have the virtual tour, which we can implement certain features like SEO, like content. So what I mean by that is for the people that are listening at home that can you know, create a visual picture, imagine you're in your own room. Imagine your own room and now imagine it's online. It's on desktop, it's on your phone and you can manually and automatically click through it as if you, you were there in person. You'll see the entire space in a dollhouse and then it'll zoom right down to the starting location and you can manually tap at your screen to each you know, new, um, new space in, in the house. His culinary career uh, started off in New York and for a very long period of time, he was based in New York. So it wasn't until he went to Florida that he started getting this virality on, on social media. Mm. And that's when he became this like superstar. <laughs> <laughs> so after that happened, he went back to New York, but instead of working regularly in other spots as a chef, what we started doing is we started treating him as the superstar that he was okay. and started doing events. So let's say like as an artist, box. type yeah, like right. as an artist, you go to different cities, different states, yeah. and you do shows, right? Yep, yep. We treated him as an artist, but instead nice. of him going out and singing songs, mm -hmm. he's going to different cities, different states, and he's bringing his menu to, the, to different places. Yep. Providence has been the place that has given us the most support.